Let's bring in Gordon Chang. He's an analyst on China and North Korea. Gordon, good to see you. You've said that you think Russia could possibly also be involved with these objects. You tweeted last night, quote, we will be in the fight soon. China and Russia, which are driving events, are making sure of that. We're at the end of decades of general peace, unquote. Okay, that's, that's a terrifying proposition. We still don't know what those other three objects were, and there's a chance we, we might never know. Do you really think that this could kick off nonstop conflict, if not World War III? It, that's a possibility, Jake. Remember, the objects that were shot down on Friday and Saturday entered North American airspace um, from the north. And that means that they probably passed over Russia. That means perhaps Russia, uh, these are Russian objects. Maybe China launched them from Russia, or maybe China launched them from China, but they floated over Russia, which means that Russia presumably gave approval to that. We know that the, the China's top diplomat is going to be in Moscow in a couple days. That follows by a couple weeks. The vice foreign minister went to Moscow. Xi Jinping, the Chinese ruler, is supposed to go to Moscow this year. And we've seen China be all in on the Russian war effort in Ukraine. So the conclusion is that China and Russia are forming a durable partnership. And what are these objects, do you think? Do you think they're just provocative? They're just trying to needle us? Do you think they're surveillance? Do you think they're potentially weapons? Yeah, we don't know. Um, the, apparently, they were smaller so that uh, they might be less dangerous than the balloon that entered into the U.S. airspace on January 28th. Uh, from the South, which is Chinese. Um, we don't know. And as you heard from those senators who um, attended the briefing, I, I don't think the administration knows either. But one thing, I think President Biden needs to address the American public, even if we don't know. And the American people need to hear it from our leader. You know, Canada's Justin Trudeau um, spoke to Canada about uh, the object that was over their country. President Biden needs to do the same thing. Um, I, I want to get your take on how the U.S. is handling this in terms of communication, communication with the Chinese leaders. Uh, obviously, Secretary of State Blinken canceled his trip to China after that first uh, Chinese spy balloon. Um, we're told that the Ministry of Defense in China has not taken calls from Secretary of Defense Austin or other attempts at outreach. Um, and, and the State Department spokesman Ned Price said yesterday the U.S., believes in keeping lines of communication open with China. How should the Biden administration be addressing this when it comes to communication with China? I don't think we should be talking to China. China right now is not in a position to deal with the United States in good faith. And so I don't see why we should be communicating with them. You know, it's an article of faith among American foreign policymakers for decades that you talk to an adversary, uh, you talk to an enemy. But the problem is, by doing that, we've emboldened the worst elements in the Chinese political system by showing that belligerent acts um, are able to get the United States to a position where we look like we're desperately trying to pursue China. And, you know, we heard President Biden um, in that conversation with Judy Woodruff of PBS say, well, this, this incident, this spy balloon incident is not going to change U.S.-China relations. Well, essentially, that was telling China there's going to be no cost for what was obviously a very dangerous act. So we need to have a new way of doing things with China. Our policies, yes, they sound good to the ear, but they produce disastrous results over the course of decades. All right, Gordon Chang, thank you so much. Appreciate it, as always.